Bible. We want to welcome you here this morning. Uh, we want to get started in a, in a word of prayer, uh, but we, first of all, we want to welcome everybody that's here today. Uh, there, we may have somebody, uh, some people sitting out in the parking lot, people in their cars, people in their homes watching through Facebook. Uh, just welcome all of you here uh, through the many different ways that we're trying to get the service out this morning. Uh, but we may be using many different ways, but we're all worshiping one God. So let's go to him in prayer. Uh, Father God, I just want to say thank you. And thank you for letting us gather here this morning. Uh, Father, thank you for the, the reason that we gather, for what your son has done for us, uh, what he's doing in us. And uh, Father, just help what we do to be about you and not about ourselves. Uh, Father, about worshiping your son uh, and what he did for us and uh, what he's doing in us and making, it, making his name big uh, so that other people can see that you are real and uh, that you do love us. And uh, Father, we just want to say thank you. Uh, for what you're going to do, uh, Father, that we've come expecting to uh, learn about you more this morning, and uh, Father, that you would do something supernatural uh, within our, us so that you can be revealed to this world. And uh, Father, just thank you again for all you've done for us, and Father, thank you for what you will do. We ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm almost used to the horn honking right now, but uh, anyway, we're glad you're here this morning. God is good. All the time. All the time and all God the time. Is good. God, God is, good. is good. I hope you've all had a wonderful week. Please join me in singing. We're going to open up this morning by singing the songs, Great and Mighty, all about this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. glad. I, I'm hearing you out of your car saying that word, glad. And be glad in it. All right, join me on great and mighty. Great. 
Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up your banner, let the anthems ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up your banner, let the anthems ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Don't you join me on, oh, how I love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells of one who loved his heart and fill my deepest woe. Who in me sorrow bears a part that nothing there below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Now we're going to try something a little bit different. I've never done this before. Out the front porch of the church. I want you to insert the words of Amazing Grace. The first verse of Amazing Grace. Everybody know that one, right? Amen. Okay. So we're going to go. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.
great song that is. And you hear the words of that song and it says something special, doesn't it? It says, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows fall? Because we know this morning, without a doubt, that His hand is on us. If He can take care of the little birds and He can take care of all their needs, Surely our God can take care of us. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I want to I wanna again welcome you here this morning. I want to thank you for coming and being uh, here with us on the campus of the church. And, and for all of you who are listening at home in your pajamas, and uh, I don't know, maybe some folks here in their pajamas, if they don't get out of the car, we're okay. But <laughs> I think that was Grady. I'm just nearly sure it was. But... Uh, um, if you're listening to us from from your homes this morning, Facebook Live, we're thankful that you've done so, and uh, we've been having great participation in that. And I want to encourage you to to share that. If you're listening to it uh, through uh, Facebook Live, I encourage you to share that with other people. And and uh, I think week before last, we had over a thousand views before the week was out. Uh, of our service that morning. So, you know, any way that we can get out the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the important thing, and that God be glorified. It's not, this is not all about us. You know, why, what's going on in our nation today is it's not all about us, but it's about, I believe, God trying to tell us all something. We'll just sit back and listen a little bit and pay attention to what he has to say to us. I want to talk to you this morning for a few minutes along this subject. Do you hear Jesus calling you today? Do you hear Jesus? Do we hear Jesus calling us today? Do we know that God is, is paying attention to us? Do we know that he is, is calling us for particular reasons to do what he wants us to do, to accomplish what he wants to accomplish, and to use us in the, in, in the uh, passing on of his gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone once said, if we treated our Bibles as well as we do our cell phones, it would be amazing what God could do through us. Amen? Man. You know, sometimes, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I just get the urge to throw mine in the river. <laughs> and it wouldn't be near as expensive a loss as many of yours would, but uh, it would be amazing what God could do through us. Well, you know what? In our scripture today, and we're going to be looking in the book of John chapter 11, in our scripture today, one of Jesus' very close friends has died. Jesus was a close friend of the family. He was... Um, he was he loved the family, he loved the sisters, he loved the brother. And this is a, a man by the name of Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. They sent for Jesus because Lazarus was sick. And you know what? They remind me of us because when we send for Jesus, we expect him to come right then, don't we? We don't want to wait. We don't want to wait on his timing. We want him to come right then because that's when we think we need him. And we think because we need him, that's his perfect will. And he's going to come. He's just going to come running down the path. Well, listen, folks. God's will and God's timing does not always agree with ours. But it didn't in this case. The sisters sent for Jesus while Lazarus was sick. But for the purpose of the will of God to be accomplished, Jesus didn't arrive until four days after Lazarus died. The Bible tells us that he showed up at the cemetery after Lazarus had been there for four days so that God might be glorified. If you have your Bibles with you in your vehicles this morning, and I just I sat here a while ago and I thought of something funny I heard some of you would turn your motors off and some of you were cranking your motors back up and you know what that's that's one of the things that your staff tries to do every week is keep your motors running amen <laughs> so if you need to keep your motor running to keep yourself cool please feel free to do so john chapter 11 beginning with verse 20 
John chapter 11, beginning with verse 20. And the word of the Lord says, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. And Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, Oh, I, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, What? Read this verse with me. You can do it. I, I am, am the, the resurrection, resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. You Man. know what? Before Jesus even got here, he told his disciples about what had gone on with Lazarus, and he said this. He said, my friend sleeps. My friend sleeps. Verse 26 said, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is, who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, Now listen to this last latter part of verse 28. The teacher, Jesus, has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now I would ask us, all of us this morning, this question, did you hear Jesus calling you today? Did you hear did you hear him calling, first of all, calling you to himself? You know the desire and, 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 the, and the will of God for all of us is to first of all have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ and therefore be reconciled with the Father God in heaven. Jesus calls men to himself. What kind of call is that? Well, the Bible tells us in John chapter 14, verse 27. John 14, verse 27 tells us that it is a call of peace. Peace I leave with you. That doesn't seem too much like the time of peace in our world today, does it? You know, you, you just you turn on the news and it seems like every day and every night something new and something disastrous and something unpleasant and I'm sure you all saw on the news last night of the of the of the incident that happened in Atlanta, Georgia, and and all of the protesting that's going on over there, and all of it that's been going on all over our nation for the last couple of weeks. Doesn't seem much like a time of peace, does it? Well, folks, let's just reconcile ourselves to the fact that this world is never going to know true peace until Jesus comes back. Yeah. Until he comes and takes us out of this world, we're never going to know true peace. But here's what Jesus said. He said, peace, I leave with you. Peace, my peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. And then he said, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Sometimes our hearts get troubled, don't we? Sometimes we get a little bit afraid you know, because of all the things that we see going on in the world around us. But listen, he's calling us today to a call of peace. But I believe, secondly, he's calling us also to a, to a guiltless conscience. How many of you like to feel guilty? I don't. I don't know about you. But if I ever do anything that that I, I know I'm not supposed to do and I know it didn't please God. Don't you just don't you just hate that feeling of guilt that that falls all over you and, and you think, oh my goodness, I really wish I could get rid of this. Well the Bible tells us how we can do that in 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He takes away the guilt. He cleanses us and takes away the guilt. But the third thing is a call to full pardon from sin. Amen. 
Man. God gives us a full pardon for sin. You know, we're, hear, we're hearing an awful lot today about uh, some people that have been put in prison. And, of course, you know, people think, automatically think, well, the prison is full of innocent people. Because they all say they're innocent even though they're in prison. But listen, some of those people are innocent. And there have been some of those that have been pardoned and, and given freedom because of DNA testing and because of things that have proven that they were guiltless for what they had been accused of. God takes away our guilt because it is a full pardon from sin. And I'm glad to announce to you this morning that when we can say that we are pardoned from sin, we are pardoned from past, present, and future sins because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 55 verse 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. And it's a call to a new life in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So he calls us to himself. Second thing he does is he calls us in the darkest hours of our lives. And, you know, I, I know, I realize that many of you, a lot of you sitting in this parking lot today or a lot of you listening to us by way of Facebook this morning, you've been through those dark hours. You've been through those times when you just thought, man, I, I don't know about this. I, I don't know whether I can, I can handle this. I don't know whether or not I can make my way through this. Well, listen, I can't make my way through it. But through God Almighty, we can make our way through it. Amen. Through those Amen. darkest hours. Listen, John 11, verses 14 and 15. You're right there at it. Let's turn back there. Verses 14 and 15. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sake that I was not here, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go to him. Jesus said, Lazarus sleeps. We go through dark hours. And some of the darkest times, and I'm just going to go ahead and tell you this morning that for the last six, almost seven weeks now, it's been some of the darkest times in, in mine and Miss Kathy's life. I can never remember. We've had some hard times. We've had some, tr some, some troubled times. We've been through some things in 40, almost 46 years of marriage. And... 46 years of ministry. We've been through some, some hard times. You know, I, I just, another thing I thought about a while ago, I thought, you know, this is really unusual to be preaching to a parking lot full of cars. And, and I can remember a time or two when there were some people who came and parked in the parking lot, but they didn't get out. But it wasn't because we were having a drive through service. It's because they was mad at the preacher. And I hope that's not the case with you this morning. But listen. He calls us in those darkest hours that we may believe Him. Do we believe what He says? <laughs> Do I believe what He says? Oh, I preach it. Listen to me. I preach it. And I tell y'all that that's what we got to do. That's what we got to believe. That's what we got to hold on to. But I, I'm going to just go ahead and be honest with you this morning. When it turns itself around and that dark hour comes to the, to the preacher's family, it's really hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I do know one thing this morning, and I have the peace in my heart, that we have a son who is at home in heaven with Jesus and that he is he is there. I'm sure if he met my mama when he got to heaven, she's probably cooked him some steak and gravy. And, uh, you know, there's, there's peace and there's joy in the place where he is today. And that brings joy to my heart. 
But listen, Jesus calls us in those darkest times. Another verse of scripture that comes to my mind is Romans 8, 28, and it says, We know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. That includes all things. I said, no, that's not just the good things. It's those that bring us into those dark times. Now, let there be no mistake about it. It's the power of God Amen. that takes us through it. Trouble is often the only door through which Jesus can get our heart and get the message to us he wants us to hear. Here's number three. He calls us in several different ways, and I just want to mention these. I'm not going to belabor these points. But here's what he, he calls us in many different ways. He calls us, first of all, through the preaching of the Word. Romans 10, verses 14 and 17 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without preaching? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. He calls us through the preaching of the Word. He calls us sometimes through tragedy and through death and through sickness. He uses those things to get our attention, to tell us what He wants us to hear. And here's the last point, and I'm done. He is calling us today. Do you hear Him? Are you listening? That's the important thing. We may think we're hearing God speak to us, but are we listening to what God wants to tell us? Listen. He's calling us today. He's calling us to the confession of sin. If there's anything in our life this morning that we need to confess to Him and we need to ask forgiveness for. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confession of sin. Repentance of, repentance of sin. God commends all men everywhere to repent. And if you're listening this morning, either here in the parking lot or by Facebook Live or, or however you may get the message that's being delivered today, He's calling us to a new birth in Jesus Christ. Do you know Him this morning? Have you accepted Him as your personal Savior? And He's calling us to eternal life in heaven. John, John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Who it is in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. God's calling us this morning to tell us some things that we really already know. But are we listening? Are we paying attention? Are we getting the message that He wants us to get? And I trust this morning we are. I trust and pray this morning that the message of the good news of Jesus Christ and all the ways that it can possibly go out will go out today to all of us who need to hear it. Let's pay attention and hear God calling us today. Father, thank you this morning. Thank you for this time. Thank you for uh, the time to share your message. Thank you for uh, this, uh, the, Lord, the, uh, the joy of being able to preach the word. And, and God, I thank you for the peace that I've found in my heart today. Knowing that you walk through us, Lord, through the hard times and the good times, you're not just a fair weather friend, God. You are our friend that sticks closer than a brother. And you walk with us, whatever the case may be. Speak to us today, Lord, and help us to hear you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs>